For USCFSales.com, I'm Steve Lopez with another Fritz tip for you, applying to both Fritz 12 and Fritz 13. We're going to look at a feature today called Deep Position Analysis. Now, I'm going to apologize before we begin for two reasons. One is my voice is a little tore up. It's going to crack and break and do weird things. I apologize for that. The other thing I need to apologize for is this is going to take a little while to explain. This is not going to be a short video. This is a complicated feature, but I'll go through as quick as I can. This is a position I was looking at the other day. I wrote an article about this opening. It's called the Steinitz Gambit. I wrote an article about it probably a dozen years ago or more, and I'd completely forgotten this opening until the other day I was going through this game, and this very game here, and I saw this position. And I said, man, I wonder if it's as bad as everybody says. It actually, about 100 years ago, was considered to be a viable alternative, a viable variation of the King's Gambit, and it's fallen into disrepute. So I wanted to have a chess engine analyzed from this position, but not just give me a line of play, give me a whole tree of moves. So by using deep position analysis, I wind up with this. And there's a ton of analysis here. It's a whole tree of analysis. Now, how do we make that happen? Well, first let's explain what it does. Deep position analysis, when you start running, it begins from a position. This is the very position where I started this. It generates a certain number of variations. In this case, I had it set up to generate three variations. So we ended up with b6, queen h5, check, and g5 for black. After it came up with those three moves, it popped them into the game, then it moved ahead to b6, and it began to analyze again, coming up with a couple of alternatives for white. I'm sorry, for white down here. Uh, queen d3, queen d2. And then after it analyzed enough to put these two moves in, it moved ahead to this move and began to analyze again. Alternatives for black. Came up with knight b4, queen h5 check. Then it moved to knight b4, began to analyze again. Basically what it does, you set up how long you want your variations to be. You'll notice all the variations end with white's 13th move. When it got here, it jumped back and went to this move and began to analyze again. Analyzing alternatives for white, then moving to this move, then to this move, popping in variations as it goes. Not full variations, but just candidate moves, then going back and analyzing each candidate. Obviously this takes a while to do. This is not something you do very quickly. Let's show you how it works. First of all, you need a position. So we'll go back to where I was, where I started with this position. You go to the Analysis tab, and you select Deep Position Analysis. These are the very settings that I use to generate that tree, by the way. Time and depth we've looked at in other videos. I'm not going to beat on them here. I will tell you, though, that time and depth and total time, there's a third setting, are mutually exclusive. You can select one but not more than one. Total time, the default for this, if you're on a budget and you want it to just use X amount of time to generate the tree and not overrun that amount of time, you can use total time. 480 minutes. That's eight hours, right? Seven, eight, yeah, eight hours. Um, that's a long time. That gives you an idea that this is not a feature that you run casually. That tree that you saw when I showed you the tree earlier, took about, I think it took about two and a half hours to generate that tree. So you just need to be aware this does take time. I set it for a depth setting of 19 moves. I want it to look 19 moves ahead before making a decision. Some people believe, by the way, that if you let it look longer in the initial position, you get better moves. That's why there's a plus root. For example, I could have had it look for 21 ply ahead in the initial move or even... 23 ply ahead, 19 plus an additional 4. So you can add extra time. If you do a time setting, 60 seconds a move plus initially you might want to add, make it go 3 minutes on the first move if, if you want. So that's what the plus setting is for. Length of variations, 15 is what I use. That's why all those variations ended with white's 13th move. This is where it gets a little complicated. Branching. You can set it to have branching for both white moves, black moves, or both. What that means is if you set it, for example, just since we're looking at black's replies to king e2, it's only going to show you multiple alternatives for black. Every time there's a white move, it will just show you the best move for white. 
Alternatively, you could do that. Multiple possibilities for white, only the best move for black. So, for example, if you're looking at analyzing this from black's standpoint, there's the possibility of using this. Click white, that way you're only going to see the best move for black in any given position. I like to use both. I like to see as much stuff as I can see. Branching. I use this. That's why when you go back here, for example, branching the first move was three, branching in second move was two. Let me show you how that works. Starting here, branching in first move means that we got three alternatives for black. Branching after that was set for two. That's why we typically see two variations for black here. We see two variations for white, you know, on down the page. Sorry, when we get down here into other uh, variations. So what you're setting up is you want three branches initially, and then you want to have two nested sub-branches, and then you can have two or more nested sub-branches within those branches, etc. It's really hard to explain, but what we're looking at here is three variations, three main variations, two sub-variations within those variations, two sub-variations within those variations, two sub-variations within those sub-variations. So that's what this means. That's what branching means. This length of variations determines how long the variations will be, how long the, the branches of the tree will be. This controls how many branches there will be, how many variations there will be. I will tell you that the higher you set these numbers, the longer the process takes by, by a long shot. Evaluation window. I had it set for 50. Basically what that means is this. In analyzing King E, the position after King E2, black alternatives, it's going to find a best move, which in this case was B6. What I wanted was, since I set it for evaluation level of 50, what that means is that any move that's worse than B6 by a half pawn or more in its evaluation isn't going to wind up in the tree. So if you set it for, say, 25, it means any variation that's worse than the best move by a quarter of a pawn does not wind up in the tree. Set it for 50, any variation that's worth, worse by a half pawn does not wind up, or, or more than a half pawn does not wind up in the tree. The higher you set, <coughs> excuse me, the higher you set this value, the more stuff you get in your tree. The lower you set this value, the more stuff gets cut out and doesn't wind up in the tree. So if you set this, for example, for zero, you're just going to get one line of play. <coughs> Excuse me, I told you my voice was pretty tore up. You're only going to get one line of play if you set it for zero or a very low number. If you set it for higher numbers, the higher you set it, the more stuff you wind up with in your tree within these parameters. I encourage you to check the help file. I also blogged about this on our USCF sales blog. You will find the link to it in the description of this video on YouTube. Check that out because I wrote about this at some length uh, several weeks ago. So go back and look for the deep position analysis article on our blog. It's really hard to describe in a video. But what you wind up with if you set it up and run it is you get a whole tree of analysis, not just a single line of play as if you just hit infinite analysis and then copied that one line in here. It's a really useful feature for analyzing positions. Um, as I said, I had written an uh, article about this years ago, and I was thinking about doing a video on this position for my personal YouTube page, and I wanted to run a deep position analysis. So what you do is you start with a position, you go to the Analysis tab, click Deep Position Analysis, set your parameters, click OK, and let it rip. And then go away, because it's going to take a while. The longer you make the variations, and the higher you make the branching factors, the longer it takes. This took about two and a half hours to generate. Note also that it does not automatically save your work. Fritz does not automatically save this. So when you're done, if you want to save it, you need to come to the file menu and use either save or replace to save that information. Otherwise, all that work is for nothing because as soon as you load another game, this will all disappear. So make sure, this is mega important, make sure you save your work at the end of a deep position analysis. But what it is, it's, I also wrote an article on our blog about something called creeping analysis that you can do manually. What this is, is creeping analysis, but it's done automatically. It starts at this position, generates with the settings that I used, 
branching factor over three. It generates three candidate moves. Then it goes in one at a time and analyzes each candidate move, coming up with more candidate moves. Goes to this move, analyzes, comes up with more candidates. Goes to this move, analyzes, comes up with more candidates, and eventually will just fall into one line of play. When it gets to the end, it goes back and starts analyzing this variation and drops in candidates. And little by little, you can watch this go, little by little, it ultimately creates a whole tree of analysis where you can look at a whole pile of different possibilities out of a given position. Really great stuff for opening research and early middle game research. Terrific stuff. You can learn a lot about an opening just by looking at these variations. For USCFSales.com, I'm Steve Lopez. Thank you for watching.